Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today it's Tuesday, so I'm going to be doing Tag Tuesday, and today's tag is the Murder on the Orient Express tag. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice, and I have way too many books. And today we're going to be talking one of my very favourite books, sort of. One of my favourite Agatha Christie's, in case you didn't know, is Murder on the Orient Express, um, the famous Poirot mystery. And we've got Poirot and the book in the background here today, just to celebrate that book a little bit more. So, to celebrate the reading of this book that we did for Christie Fest back in November, um, Julie over at The Hungry Bookworm created her own Murder on the Orient Express tag. And I will link Julie's tag video down below. If you would like to try this tag, please do go ahead and do it as well. Um, I really had to rack my brains on this one. Some of the prompts really challenged me, so well done Julie. Um, I will hopefully be able to answer all the questions, but it was a close thing. I would like to do my tagging up front because otherwise I might forget. And I'm going to tag two other Agatha Christie fans, um, Nikki over at Red Dot Reads and Jennifer at Jennifer Loves Books. So I hope you'd both like to do this tag. Um, if not, no worries. And if you're watching, please do consider yourself tagged if you'd like to do this one. So, the Murder on the Orient Express tag has, I think, seven prompts and they are all sort of named after someone or something in the book. So, let's start off straight away with prompt number one, Mrs Hubbard. Mrs Hubbard is a very layered character, shall we say, in this book. For Mrs Hubbard, um, Julie has asked us to recommend a multi-dimensional book. And I've taken this quite literally, and this is a book about the multiverse basically and it blew my mind when I read it a little bit and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I read this a number of years ago so my memory is a little bit hazy on it now but I do know that it involves I think a man getting into an accident or some incident occurs um, and when he wakes up he is in a different version of his life um, obviously in another parallel universe. And this turns into a book about basically the multiverse. It's very tricky, um, but I really, really enjoyed it. A great book. Um, and I have been meaning to get to some of Blake Crouch's other books ever since. So prompt number two is Mr. Ratchet, a book you love to hate. I don't really have any books that I love to hate, I wouldn't say, because I generally either love a book or I hate a book. Um, there's not really usually a happy medium or a book that I enjoy hating. What I've gone for instead is a book that I found so, so disturbing that even though I think it's a really good book, I would never actually want to recommend this to people because it's too disturbing. So this is not a recommendation of this book. It's just to say that I've read it and it's very disturbing. And I wouldn't say I love to hate it. I would say I think it's a good book, but I won't ever be able to read it again. And I needed to put it in the freezer to feel safe from it. <laughs> no, it belonged to my mum. And I said to my mum, why did you let me read this? And I also had to take it straight back to my mum's house so that it wasn't in the same house as me. It's really disturbing. So with that warning, and do not take it as a recommendation, um, the book that I've chosen for, a book that I feel conflicted about, is Then by Julie Myerson. So on paper, this has a lot of boxes ticked for me. It's a sort of post-apocalyptic, dystopian kind of world. It's kind of, it is set in the real world, but it's after some sort of apocalyptic disaster. And I don't want to say any more about it. 
it's it's absolutely horrific. I cannot believe that a writer would have it in them to be able to write this and then put it out into the world. But at the same time, it is really well written. And I think my mum enjoys this author for other books that she has read that, that I haven't read. Um, so I would be interested to try this author again. Um, but yeah, this book really did disturb me. So I haven't really answered the question, but I've tried to answer the question. Let's move swiftly on to prompt number three, Princess Dragomirov. A book that has been mouldering on your shelves for a while. Now, Julie, when you said a while, I took you very, very seriously, and this is my longest serving book on my TBR. This has been on my TBR so long, I actually got this when I was still technically probably a child. So I believe I got this from a school book fair. Um, it's a puffin book. It might be middle grade but it says on it puffin teenage fiction and the content does sound a bit heavy for middle grade so maybe it's teen. It's obviously before YA existed and this is a book first published in 1987. I haven't had it that long. I have, I have probably had this since the late 90s so that is I, I dread to think how long that is now. This book has moved house with me multiple times and it's never yet been read. Um, I actually have a bookmark in it. I've actually got to page 168 out of 234 pages in this, but I've never finished it. And I can't remember anything about it because when I read that, I probably read that bit back in the 90s. So. I don't know how it ends. It's been on mouldering on my shelves for a very long time and it's going to feature in another video coming out soon about books that are on their very last chance on my TBR. So I'll say no more about it. The next prompt was named after a character called Beddoes who is a, I think he might be a, a valet or a, a butler um, in this book. Julie's asked us to give a book with a main character in service and I've chosen Right Ho Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse for this. I listened to this last year and I listened to three of the Jeeves books but this was my favourite so far. Um, they're very light, they're very funny and they're fantastic comfort reads because you can just listen and be amused and they're read by Stephen Fry so what could be better anyway and this is about Jeeves who is a valet to a man called Bertie Wooster who is very posh and very foolish shall we say. Right Ho Jeeves is about all this and all of the other Jeeves books I assume is about all the scrapes that Bertie Wooster gets himself into and how Jeeves helps him get out of those <laughs> problems or sometimes pushes him further into those problems. Um, so he's a very, very clever valet, a very good contrast to the Bertie Wooster character. The next prompt is The Train Itself, another book that features this train. Now, for some time I was thinking, um, well, I don't know any other books that feature this train. I'm going to have to just say the graphic novel, Murder on the Orient Express. And then I thought, mm, that's a bit of a cop out. That is actually a book of the same book. It's just illustrated, basically. This one is adapted by Francois Riviere and illustrated by Solidor. Here are some of the illustrations. So I won't say this one, but what I am going to say is probably cheating anyway. So I've picked David Suchet's Poirot and Me, his book all about playing Poirot for so many years. And this definitely heavily features the Orient Express and David Suchet going on it. This is a really enjoyable um, autobiographical um, memoir by David Suchet. If you enjoy the Poirot series, I think this would be a really enjoyable book for you to read. The next prompt I really like, the next prompt is Snowstorm. In Murder on the Orient Express, the train famously gets stuck in a snowdrift and Julia's asked us to give a book that features a snowstorm or characters stuck in a weather condition. I've picked 61 Hours by Lee Child. This is one of my top favourite Lee Child, Jack Reacher books. And in this one, Jack Reacher is in the midst of icy winter in South Dakota. 
his bus that he's on skids and crashes in a gathering storm and they end up stuck I think pretty much in a snowdrift, definitely in a snowstorm and the place where Reacher is stuck of course has something else going on and Reacher ends up embroiled in it as always. This one's fantastic, I love the way this counts down hours so um, at hour 61 is where the bus crashes and it counts down the hours to hour zero and this is definitely one of Lee Child's absolute top best Jack Reacher thrillers and my mum started with this one, this was her first Jack Reacher. You could start in worse places, it's a great great book in the Jack Reacher series so if you haven't read any Jack Reacher yet I highly recommend 61 Hours. Um, I also recommend lots of the others and I do have a video talking about where to start with Jack Reacher, A Reader's Guide to Jack Reacher. If you'd like to check that out I'll put a card linking it up here somewhere and in the description. This is my recommendation for a snowstormy book. And the final prompt is the prompt that stumped me the most. The last prompt is Yugoslavia. The book is set in Yugoslavia and Yugoslavia doesn't exist as a country anymore but Julie asks us to choose a non-fiction book about Yugoslavia or a novel set in a Slavic country. I don't have one so I I have searched the giant bookshelf, I do not have any books either to be read or that I have read that spring to mind that are set in any of the countries of the former Yugoslavia but I do have a book that features both Yugoslavia and some of the countries that were part of the former Yugoslavia and that is The Story of the World Cup by Brian Glanville. Um, this is the essential companion to the World Cup in Brazil in 2014, it says on the front. I haven't actually managed to read it. It's got very tiny print. I, I feel like that's a bit of a cheat, but this goes through every year of the World Cup and there's quite a few years towards the beginning where Yugoslavia featured and this definitely also features some of the countries from the former Yugoslavia. Um, Croatia for example famously finished third in the World Cup in 1998 in France and I believe Serbia and Slovenia have also featured in World Cups that are mentioned in this book. So <laughs> bit of a cop out but here we go Julie I managed to find a book on my shelf that at least mentions Yugoslavia even if only very tenuously. With that we've reached the end of the Murder on the Orient Express tag. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed it. Please do let me know your answers to any of these questions in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you especially if you have a book you love to hate because I don't really have one and especially if you can tell me any other books you would recommend about the Orient Express. If you've enjoyed this video I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you all again very soon for another video all about books here on Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!